Let's take a look at a very simple and basic application utilizing socket programming uh, with the client server architecture. So we're going to take a look at the server code first and we have a header file and a source file. So first in our header file, let's look at all the items that we need to include. And in this case, notice that we need to include the WinSock library. So here's ws2 underscore 32.lib and that's what this pragma comment is. We're simply including that. Alternatively, we could have also clicked on project properties and you can go in and modify linker and compiler settings there as well. Next, we have SDK ddkver.h, conid.h, and stdio.h. And these are just standard console header files that we're going to need. And then we have our socket header files, which are winsock2.h, and then Windows H and IO Stream for basic file access. And here we're just defining a WinSock version, in this case, SOC version 2, the most recent WinSock version. So those are sort of all of our includes uh, and the required libraries in our header file. In our source file, of course, we need to include the header file. And then we're going to set our namespace to the standard namespace with using namespace standard. And then remember that in a typical console application or Win32 console app, the main method is called automatically. So we have some locals. They could be global, but in this example, they're local. And they are a long called successful, a WSA data structure object called WinSock data, and a word object uh, called DLL version. And remember that words are objects of a data size that a processor naturally handles, such as 16 or 32-bit for a 32-bit processor. So with these locals, we're going to make use of them. We're going to take DLL version here, our word. We're going to use the function or method make word, which is sort of a macro in the MFC or Microsoft applications. And it's just going to concatenate its arguments together. All right, so in this case, version 2.1. Once we do this and store that in the word object DLL version, then we have successful. Remember that was our long up here, just an integer value. And we're going to go ahead and call the function WSA startup to go ahead and start the WinSock application programming interface. To do this, we're going to pass in the version as an argument and the address of WinSock data, which if you remember, that was the instance name we gave to our WSA data structure object up here. All right, so we set the version, and then we need to go ahead and call WSA startup, sort of step two there, to go ahead and fire up WinSock. The next thing we have to do is instantiate an SOCK ADDR underscore in or SOCK address object. And in this case, I called the instance address. And we want to go ahead and get the size uh, of, you know, in this case, uh, address. We're going to store that in an integer called address size, because we'll make use of that later. It's you know important to remember that or to know that, and we can return that value with the method size of. Next, we have two sockets here, one for listening on, and then one for making a connection with the client when a connection request is detected. So sock listen and sock connection are instances of the socket class. Then we come down here, and we have some socket arguments. In this case, we're calling the socket method on our socket for the connection here. And we're passing an AFNet, which indicates that it's an internet domain, not a Unix domain, here. And we're passing in SOC stream, which indicates it's connection oriented and TCP, and therefore not SOC underscore DGRAM, which would make it UDP or user datagram protocol uh, oriented. And null, of course. Now, we have to set some attributes, in this case, the data members of our structure object, right? Remember our structure object? SOCK ADDR underscore IN up here. All right, so we're going to do that. And these are the data members there. And this would be the IP address. And notice that we need to call the method or function INET underscore ADDR to convert our simple string here, our string literal, to the correct data type in that structure. And then in addition to that, we're setting the family, in this case, AF INET, it's internet based. And we're setting the port. And remember when we do that, we have to call the htons method to convert the type, all right? In this case, to a network type, not a computer type. Once we've done all that, then we're going to go ahead and instantiate and build our next socket. Remember up here, sock listen was our other socket object. 
So we call the socket method and pass in the same set of arguments. When we do this, we're going to use the bind command to bind a socket to an address and port. And the socket we want to bind is the socket we called sock listen. And it'll, it'll be bound to our IP address and port and the size of that structure or object. And then finally, we're going to call the listen method. And we're just going to listen for connection requests to appear on that socket. So therefore, we're going to pass in sock underscore listen and somexcon to handle the maximum possible number of connections that that system would allow. Now here we have an infinite for loop, so it'll just keep looping forever unless a break or some kind of sentinel value could somehow be reached. And we're just going to display a server waiting for incoming connection. And here, instead of an if block, we're going to call the accept method. This is where we're actually going to accept the connection that we're listening for and that we've bound to the socket up here with bind and listen. All right, so we call accept and we start listening for that connection request coming in from the client. And if that's the case, we're going to display a connection was found. And then we're going to go ahead and send the message to the client saying, welcome, you connected to banana server. And then if not, we could write an else block down here and, and do something else if we wanted to. Okay. So that's sort of pretty, very, you know, very simple server code. Now let's take a look at the client code. And again, the header fall and the source fall. So the client header fall. Again, notice that we need to include the dynamic link library or WinSock DLL. So here's our pragma comment lib and then ws2 underscore 32 dot lib. And then the standard header files, SDK, uh, DDK, ver, WinSock 2, Windows, iostream, and string, since we're going to be using string objects. And here we're just defining or setting the WinSock version. Okay, so once we have that, we need to include that header file in our main source file. And again, we switch to the standard namespace. And now we're going to have some locals, in this case, a long, like an integer, a WSA data structure called WinSock data, a word called DLL version. Once again, we're calling the macro to concatenate these two arguments or values here into a word. And remember that that word is just, you know, a, an amount of data, a data type based on uh, a typical amount of data that a processor would handle. So 16-bit or 32-bit or 64-bit or whatever. And now we need to go ahead and fire up the WinSock. Can't forget that. So we ha need to call the method WSA startup. We're going to pass in DLL version and the address of our WinSock data, that structure there that was declared up here. All right, so that fires up the WinSock. And next, we have a few other objects to declare. In this case, two strings, response and converter, and a character array. And we'll have to do a little bit of string conversion here. You have to do that a lot um, in C++ because there are so many different kinds of strings. In Java, you just have a few. Usually, the string class can just handle everything. But in C++, you have like a pointer to a, a character. There's a literal character array. There's several lower class string objects. There's a capital string. There's a capital CS string. There's, you know, there's all these different kinds of strings. So we'll need to do some conversion because some functions can only handle certain types. So even though all these could be considered strings, these are instances of the string class. And this is a simpler type of string, um, in this case, an array of type character. So we have those, we've declared those, and now we need to declare our structure, our sock addr underscore n object, which we call address. Here we have a socket we call sock, and now we call the socket method. And in this case, the arguments or the parameters we pass in are AFI net, sock stream, and null for a TCP based connection oriented uh, connection. Now we need to set the data members right, the attributes in our structure. So in this case, the internet address is the loopback. We're going to test it on this local machine here. And remember, the inet underscore addr function takes care of converting our simple string, our string literal here, into the format necessary to store in the structure. We're going to set the family, af, inet, or internet. And we need to specify the port in our structure. And again, remember, we have to use the htons method to convert it uh, to you know, the network uh, me method or the network style. And then once we do that, we're going to simply display, do you want to connect to the server? We'll ask them if they want to. We need to take some input via CN. Once we do this, just to make it simple or easier on the user, we're going to convert it to lowercase. We don't really care about all the characters in the string, just the first. 
Yes or no? Y or N? If no, okay, we're going to quit, and that means all this code would never be executed. If yes, then notice what we're going to do. We're going to call the connect method. We pass in our socket object, our instance there. We have to pass in our address object, which remember it's an instance of the structure SOCK ADDR underscore N. And we have to pass in the address of address, so it's sort of a reference there. And we have to typecast it to a pointer to a SOCK ADDR object. So take notice of that. In other words, this is SOCK ADDR underscore N, okay, but this is SOCK ADDR. So in the connect method, to get it to work or to make the syntax work in that function, we have to do some typecasting and convert it to SOCK address. And also, we're just going to get the size of address. We need to pass that in. So three arguments for the connect method to connect to the socket on the server. And then we're going to use the receive method to try to receive a message being sent from the server. And we'll assign the result of that into the variable successful. Do you remember what successful was? It was our long here. All right, so our long integer value. We call the receive method. We pass in the instance of the socket. And then, in this case, the string message. And then the size of message, which, remember, that was 200 up here. Just want to make sure that um, this array is large enough to accommodate whatever message or text is being sent from the server. Uh, otherwise, if it goes over, we'll have problems. All right, remember that. So just remember that that should be large enough to accommodate the largest amount of text that would be sent at one time from the server. Okay, when we do this, um, an easy way to convert a string of uh, a simple type of string, you know, an array of type character, to a more intricate type of string, an instance of the string class, is with the overloaded assignment operator. So that's what we're doing here. All right, whereas message is a character array and converter is a string object, the overloaded assignment operator allows us to do it almost like plugging it into a for loop and we could have copied it over using the index or subscript value one character at a time but in this case we're using an overloaded assignment operator so the character array now transfers its value or its contents into a string class object converter and we're just going to see out or display at the console the message that we receive from the server on our client here and then of course if they type in something that neither matched no or yes, then we'll tell them that was an inappropriate response, and we will exit. Okay? So client code and server code. Let's see how it works. So the very first thing we have to do is fire up and launch the server, and we'll do that here. All right. So there's the server waiting for an incoming connection. And now we have to fire up and launch the client and both of these are TCP. Let me drag this down here right underneath it. Okay? So I'm down here, server's up here, now watch what happens. I'm going to enter Y or yes to connect. And notice the server tells me a connection was found and it sends or transmits its message. When it does that via the send method, I receive it via the receive method and I get message from server, welcome, you have connected to banana server. Press any key to continue. And again, just to look at the pertinent code there, here's the message being sent from the server, welcome to banana server, using the send method. And here's the message being received from the server, stored in this case inside of our character array message via the receive method, and then being displayed. So hopefully that explains how to write a simple uh, or basic socket application for both the server and client ends.